So tell me a little bit about a little bit about tools for documentation. Um, well, one thing is the tools for documentation are getting easier, um, and uh, they're getting more powerful too. So it's actually a really good time now to be using them. Um, when you start to choose your tools, you might want to first uh, think about the type of project that you're doing. Is it a dictionary project? Is it texts? Um, do you need a software just for archiving, for example? And there are tools for all these different things. You also want to be aware of whether the people that will be doing the work are more comfortable with Windows or with Macs. And so it really helps to identify the people that are doing the work. And um, for many communities, the, the people that are doing the work that are the speakers may be older and might not be comfortable with any of these technologies. And it, it really creates problems. Um, I know a woman who's 70 and she just wants to be able to record herself. And even that these days can be uh, fairly hard. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is two types of uh, software programs that, that can be used and that can save a lot of time. One is called SayMore, and the other is called Fieldworks Language Explorer. And so um, we'll be talking about each of those just a little bit. But there's also something else that I wanted to talk about, which is that software changes month to month, and it's very hard to keep up with what's available. So um, before you write a grant proposal, it's really good to make sure that you have connections with people in the field who are up to date on all the technology that's available and who can really provide you with the latest information. So that's one recommendation. Hi, my name is Jack Martin. I'm going to be talking about some software designed to make language documentation easier. The program I'll be looking at is called SayMore. SayMore is a free tool that runs on Windows machines. We're looking at the SayMore website at saymore.palasso.org. You can download the program for free from this site. There's also a nice presentation here by John Hatton covering some of the features of the program. When you document a language, it's pretty easy to make video recordings of people speaking. It's much harder to keep track of all the files associated with a recording, like permission slips, photographs, transcriptions, and translations. Saymore is designed to help you prepare materials for archiving by keeping track of those files. It also makes it easier to transcribe and translate recordings. Let's start by opening the program. Today, I'm going to create a new project called Muskogee. I'm going to create a session for a video we made. Up at the top here in the program, you see a very simple interface. You can have different projects. I use those for different languages. And then you can have different sessions. Um, maybe one session per recording, for example. You also have a tab for different people. The different people might be involved in various recordings, and so you can include all your information on the people in this site right here. I'm going to start a new session, and now I'm going to drag a recording, a video recording, to the session. Next, I'm going to click on the tab labeled Start Annotating. When I do that, Saymore asks for permission to convert the video file to audio format. I'm going to go ahead and convert it. Next, I'm going to segment the recording. When you segment a recording, you divide it into sections that you can then transcribe and translate. Saymore has an automatic segmenter, which means it listens for periods of silence in the recordings. I have Use Auto Segmenter selected, and now I choose Get Started. When that process finishes, we're presented with two columns labeled Transcription and Translation. Each of the rows 
corresponds to a short segment of the recording. You can now begin transcribing and translating the recording. I'm just going to try to do two lines of the recording. Each segment of the recording is repeated three times. That allows you to transcribe it without having to press a, a repeat button. Then you can move to the next segment. The person doing the transcription has to be someone who understands the language and who can use a computer. If you don't have someone who fits that description, then you can pair up a speaker with a typist. That makes it more enjoyable for everyone. When you're done, you have various options for exporting your transcription. One option is to export to Flex Interlinear Text. Flex is another program that makes it easy to gloss texts. Another option is to export the transcription and the translation as subtitles files. You have one for the free translation and one for the transcription. If you do that, there are lots of ways you can combine the subtitle files with the video. Most video editing software will import subtitles files, for example. I chose to use a site called Amara to link the subtitles to the video. Say More is an easy program to learn. One drawback is that it doesn't run on the Apple operating system. Another limitation is that it only allows one column for each language. That means it doesn't allow you to have separate fields or tiers for each speaker. Otherwise, it's a very easy program to learn and a great resource for different communities. <laughs>